Eat or be eaten. Everywhere in nature, life is about eating and avoiding to be eaten. We will dive along the reefs at Moa Bowl in the Philippines and observe different feeding strategies as well as strategies to avoid predators. At this sandy slope, garden eels stand outside their burrow picking on food passing by in the water column. A burrow in which they can quickly retreat in case of danger. With a similar tube-like body, these small pipefishes hunt for tiny crustaceans on the sandy slope. Although their banded pattern clearly stands out, it confuses larger fishes that might prey on them. Pipefishes come in many varieties, but all have an elongated beak with which they can suck in the smallest crabs and shrimps. A predator with a tube, or perhaps more appropriate snake-like body, is the banded sea crate. A fairly common snake in the tropics that hunts for eels in crevices in the coral reef. Although very poisonous, they are not aggressive. They can stay submerged for more than two hours, but occasionally need to surface to breathe. A slender body can be a great help to avoid being seen and preyed upon, as counts for these razor fishes. They swim head down while eating zooplankton. But when it comes to disappearing, this harlequin ghost pipefish, swimming between the arms of a feather star and adapting to its color, is a real champion. Avoid being noticed works two ways. You won't get eaten, but it also allows your prey to come close without noticing you. Leaf fishes from the family of scorpion fishes are well camouflaged. Additionally, they can also move their body sideways, dropping on their side, as if they are indeed an old leaf that's lost underwater and moving on the currents. Scorpion fishes are masters of disguise and their strategy for feeding is simple. Just wait until a fish is close enough to swallow it together with the surrounding water. They blend in the variety of colors and structures of the coral reef so well that even when their position really stands out, they are still hard to detect. Disguising yourself is an excellent way to avoid predation. Night dwelling decorator crabs and spider crabs are a group of crustaceans that cover their body with small pieces of stinging anemones or hydrozoa, toxic sponges or algae. The species of crab determines what it will use as camouflage. Certainly, when covered with stinging anemones or hydrozoa, the cover is defense more than camouflage alone. Some of them are so well camouflaged that without movement they are extremely hard to detect. As such, they are not a favorite subject for underwater photographers, but as long as they are moving they are a fine subject for video. An often encountered decorator crab is the orangutan crab, which often lives in bubble corals. Their habit to cover themselves with reddish hairs obviously explains their common name. The hydroid decorator crab cuts pieces of stinging hydroids and carries them along as some sort of antenna. Other types of crabs rely on their shape and color to stay undetected while living deep inside the structures of the coral reef or between the ridges of large barrel sponges. This is also the habitat of the hairy squat lobster. This tiny animal only grows up to about 1.5 cm and is completely covered with fine hairs. The long snout elbow crab is once again an example of a crab that, due to its shape, can easily be overlooked. 
However, when it comes to camouflage, cuttle fishes are masters. They can not only change their color instantaneously to blend in with the background or show their emotions, they can also control the surface of their skin. Staying covered in the sand during the day most of the time, they hunt at night for small shrimps, crabs and fishes. The shape of the animal itself can also be a form of camouflage as can be seen in this nudibranch, the yellow-tipped Philodesmium. It eats soft corals, but these won't give up easily and have a stinging defense on their own. And it's obvious that the nudibranch is not willing to start its lunch with this specific coral. Symbiotic zooxanthella are present in this nudibranch and are causing the darker spots on its skin. Blending in the colors and structures of the coral reef is a good strategy to hide, even when the main color of your body is red. Together with the dark spots and white specks, this painted frogfish looks remarkably like a small piece of sponge. Once again, the camouflage serves two purposes, being undetected by predators and prey at the same time. These tube sponges are covered with sea cucumbers and are outstanding landmarks along the coral reef. But they can also serve as a home for the giant frogfish that, despite its position, can easily be overlooked. The defense strategy of the anemone fish is quite different. Easy to detect due to its color and active movements, it finds its cover in the stinging tentacles of the anemone, which, in its turn, is actively protected by the anemone fish. As small as they are, they are occasionally brave enough to attack a diver that comes too close. The anemone often also houses some shrimps. They provide cleaning services to both the anemone and the anemone fishes. The mushroom coral shrimp find shelter between the polyps of the solitarily living mushroom coral. And yet another safe place to live has been found by the feather star clingfish. Such a small place won't however be sufficient for larger fishes. For some of them the various coral fans provide shelter. A specific family of fan corals, Muricella, houses the pygmy seahorse Hippocampus barkipanti. With a body size of less than 2 cm, they are one of the larger species of pygmy seahorses. Nevertheless, as they adapt their color to the color of the fan coral, and with a body full of blobs that resemble the individual polyps of the fan, they are truly hard to detect. Fan corals come in many varieties and colors.
part for the fan corals, also the soft corals bring beautiful colors to the reef. Protection against predators can also be obtained by covering your complete body by sharp moving spines as counts for this oval heart urchin and other sea urchins. These striped catfish have a highly venomous spine on the first dorsal fin and each of the pectoral fins. Eating one is a mistake that a predator will only make once. And consequently, the other fish in the school are protected by the sacrifice of one individual. So why not borrow that strategy against predators by imitating the catfish? That is exactly what this school of convict blennies does, both in their shape as in the school behavior. Safety can also be found in numbers. For small glass fish, as well as for the schooling fishes that live along the sides of the deep reefs. When no predators are around, they swim away from the protection of the reef to feed in the water column, but move back towards the reef when predators arrive. Predators like these trevolis. However, when it comes to safety in numbers, this exceptionally large school of sardines exceeds them all. A school so large that it can block the sunlight completely. Let's go back to the tranquility of the reef, where these blue tunicates filter feed the water to get their nutrition. And also these duster worms stand out on the reef to catch their food from the passing water. While observing this duster worm, we suddenly witness the release of egg bundles. A very common tube worm is the Christmas tree worm. They can be found all over the coral reef, filtering the water with their Christmas tree-like crown in various colors. 
and also corals are stationary feeders that extract their food from the passing water. The pulsating coral, despite being stationary, is however more active in retrieving its food. At night, anemones appear from the sand to catch small animals with their stinging tentacles. And when small marine worms are attracted by the video light, it brings the anemone an easy catch. The cover of night also allows the corals to extend their polyps in order to catch anything small enough to be stung, paralyzed and digested. Stationary, but at the same time very active feeding, can be seen in the species of Neotheonidium sea cucumbers. These sea cucumbers have a highly efficient way of filtering the water and bringing the filtered material towards the central mouth. Equipped with smaller tentacles and at night moving around is this lion's paw sea cucumber, picking up sand and getting the nutritious material from it while crawling over the reef. Sea cucumbers come in a wide variety of species. Sea stars, like this blue sea star, move around the reef extracting nutritious material by excreting their stomachs, a digestion method that is also used by sea urchins. Nudibranches are food specialists crawling over the reef towards their specific food which they detect with their rhinophores. And also sea slugs hunt the reef at night. Finally, one of the larger inhabitants of the reef are the sea turtles. Their food depends on the type of turtle. The green turtle is the only vegetarian amongst the turtles, feeding on seagrass and other plants on the reef slopes. 